What is better than one fierce RST? Two, of course. And do you know what's a good thing about these two? It cost me less than Rowan's Broken Evil. It's for you, Rowan. <laughs> right, what are we doing today? Right, I've got track day coming up soon and i got to do some preparation work on Yobo. Oh no, in the meantime, it's going out of the way, but let me update you on some stuff. Um, if you last remember, we did the dash swap and I had some problems with the airbag light. Um, I changed the passenger seat belt, didn't fix it. Well, anyway, the cord throw up um, driver seat belt changed that that cord went and then i still couldn't get rid of the airbag light because i had a problem with the switch which is under there i want this here this passenger switch on and off so i broke it down to the bare gubbins and got a quick repair on it at the moment and that is keeping my airbag light off start a minute so i should go to on no airbag light but i've just had the the most weirdest problem with it since i swapped the dashboard the brakes were just locked on trying to drive it was a nightmare i took it up the road i thought maybe it'll sort itself out I could barely drive it they were locked on so hard no error codes no nothing faffed around a bit on force and i thought i activated something and messed it up but i hadn't it turned out to be the switch is behind the pedal now i dis removed that while i was trying to get the airbags out i put it back in and plugged it in uh, I'd upset something so took it out squeezed it a couple of times put it back in and it's all sorted so brakes all working fine this is almost ready to go We've got a windscreen being changed in a couple of days so um, Ono then will be ready for MOT and on the road which is good because then your ball can get my full attention and I don't have to worry about this car anymore right so you may or may not have watched the last video. So I think some people only watched the start of it where I had problems with the yellow speed coilovers. But if you'd watched till the end, you would have seen I got some new ones. So I'll quickly show you them. So if you didn't get to the end of that video, this is what you missed. I've got some Meister Art Club Race coilovers in custom spec. Go back, watch a video, and I'll fill you in on all the details of them on there. And in the meantime, if you want to help me out, go pick yourself up. A fast and old t-shirt. Look at the link down below for Teespring. There's four colour options on there. Black, white, sand and charcoal. I'm going to make four quid off each t-shirt. So I'm not going to get rich unless you buy a lot of them. So click the link, get buy in and you can be fast and old. Right, let's get back to the car. Right, so first thing to show you. New tyres. Full set of 480 or That was morning about the last one on track. Um, the last set. And they're on a spare set of wheels. So at Donington next week i'm gonna lap time both tires because i am convinced that the 808 hours i was running were gone um i bought them second hand and they'd been through a lot of each cycles before i had them um, two ring trips i think nath said a couple of track days i took them to the ring i used them for track day or two so they just felt dog rough so proof of the pudding would be in a lap times if not i gotta eat a bit of humble pie I'm just learning how to drive better but anyway right what are we doing so i've got calm marine brake fluid got another full one we're gonna do some flushing don't be alarmed i know what you're thinking yeah these are i get hr pads or whatever you call them no euro car parts i know they are a terrible brand for brake pads but i'm going to use the discs on the back because these were planned for um the other car and i'm going to use them on you now but if you remember before the plan was to put the st170 on the back which were bigger um but the thing is now i'm not going down the route the bigger brakes yet at the moment so if i put them on the back i'm gonna have equal size discs front and back and that's just not it's not gonna be right is it so they are on old and i think I may completely delay doing a big front brake conversion. He's speaking to a few boys who track and they are running endless pads, which are really expensive, but they don't stand the brakes and performing fine. So I think I'm going to upgrade my pads and stay standard. I have actually bought the conversion brackets for the Brembo, but I don't know what I'm going to do. But anyway, 
changing the back discs and putting them on but I'm not putting them pads on I've got a set of Godspeed Kevlar pads which I've had from the old track car the Focus they should fit straight on loads of life in them they've only I think they only done one day so I'm going to use them up in the meantime because it's what I got and then we'll go down new brakes in the future when I got a bit more money so I think we'll strip off the back get the backs changed and then we'll work forwards for a, a flush and you see I got some new brake hose there got some new brake hose ducked into the brake so let's get cracking all right so looking at these crusty things you can see where I'm changing them look at the pads there's uh, barely anything left on them so discs uh, showing signs of wear but you know they're not the worst I've ever seen but this side's definitely looking crustier but it's got more pad life so let's get them swapped it's always a good sign when you're undoing your calipers you if this is spinning at the same time you haven't got see sliders so if you were undoing these nuts and you don't need to put a 15 mil on there you will see sliders all right so it's never a good sign when your backing plates are falling off these pads are nearly done i would say actually they are done come on you come on there you are that's him he's off all right so with the carrier out even though these are spinning nice and free look if i pop this out there's plenty of grease on there but down deep inside i don't know if you can see here there's some rust in there fragments of rust there so that was a good time to clean them up also i'll wire brush these areas as well so the pads can slide nice and free there you are can you see how the rest have started up there so it's only a matter of time before that works its way down as the grease dries out let's give them a good clean up with a wire brush and then grease them up clean all in it put them back in Right, so when you grease these up you don't want to like fill inside that um sleeve with too much grease because what'll happen is it'll end up building up loads of pressure in there so and you'll have too much in the seal so it'll pop your seals off so as long as you've got enough in it you'll be fine right and as easy as that we have one side done so before I put the disc on because these are very expensive discs cost me 15 pound a pair i wire brushed the hub cleaned that up greased it and fitted the caliber so do the other side and backs it done right so on this side we've got some telltale signs that the sliders uh, are seized and that's part way on the disc and as i told you earlier the slider's not doing any airlock so i've undone all of this without having to use a 15 mil so i'm pretty sure that bottom one sees the top one we're getting a little bit of turn in that, but it's fairly stiff so i think that one's on its way too because it's not as free moving as it should so i'll take them off and have a look what we see right so this is what we go with this carrier this one is like i thought seized i can't move it and this one turns but it's tight so there you have it look look at that grease is dry that one wouldn't have been long before that had gone fully seized so i'll try a pair of pliers on this and pull it out if not i have to go in the vice all right so look at that very rusted so we're gonna do like what we've done the others a bit more wire brushing clean them up grease them put them back on right so that's both sides all put back together i've bled the brakes i've got the carbon ring fluid flushed right through both sides something better look if you look in see where the paint is chipping in there can you see that I'm going to do some work in the future i'm touching that up because i know one of the cars that's a bit of a rot area so something to look at in the future right right yo welcome to the next day now last night i started doing the oil um drained it all out but got the oil filter off went to put the new one on and this thing i bought from euro car parts i thought i'll buy a bosch one but it was the wrong one the hole was too big so the car's been stranded for the night kind of picked up another one a wix one from somewhere else and i'm ready to do the oil i've got 
Magnatech from Alphas because it was cheap. I also done last night off camera, sorted out the brake hose there. What I want to do with that, I actually want to make um, a funnel type of design behind you so that I can actually connect the pipe to and I'll have a proper feed to the brakes. I may use the part of the original dust shield um, as the means for, for making it. That's something for future. The other thing is, change some wheel nuts. Got these second hand of someone on Facebook. I knew they looked like it. And it cost me just over a tenner. Then 50 I think it was. Because you know the standard nuts are absolute junk. So I'm happy to get them swap. Right. What am I going to do now? Oil. So, I'm going to get our filter on and get the oil changed. I almost forgot to say as well, bleed of the brake. Did the back's 250ml flush each side and the front's about 100 millilitres flush through. Glug, 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 glug. Right, I have pretty much finished all of my track day prep now. I am ready to go. So some things I haven't shown now. This is something I partly did before, but is the, the pedal. You see I've got a spark or pedal on it. That's just so I can heal and tow. Just the spacing is so poor on the standard pedals. Also, if you remember before, um, going back quite a long time ago, I did a a video on a pedal spacer from Distinct Designs. Now, uh, I found it very impressive when I done the video at first. Actually, when I got on track and gave it a good test, I wasn't as happy with it as I first came across in the video. I think the 38mm is just too big. Uh, sorry, Brad, but it is. Um, the 10mm is is the one. If you if you're into track driving and the one nice heel and toe, get 10 mil. So what I done is I cut mine down. So the reason they, it doesn't work for me, the bigger one, is obviously a pedal compresses. So when your pedal's right down, it's quite, it's quite stiff now because the engine's off. Let me soften it up, hang on. Right, so when your pedal is softer and you're right down, the accelerator then is up a lot higher and it just feels all wrong. But that's at a, a nice position. Now, if you go back to my last video of Castlecombe, I was healing towing on every downshift, but sometimes you just can't hear it. So I had the Sparkle pedal on then, but I didn't have the 10 mil spacer, so I've moved that up. And what is these? The dual mass flywheels on these engines make them really lazy. Whereas when I was in my focus, I had lightning flywheel and everything. So tap a throttle, boom, and the revs would shoot up in between shifts, perfect. So I've got to learn a new technique. I've actually got to stab the accelerator a lot harder. So with that pedal space, I'm moving it just 10 mil up. Um, them little stabs I'm giving on the side of my foot is just going to rev it up a little bit harder. So. That is that. The other thing I never talked about before was I am having real problems staying in this seat. I'm sliding around like a good and it's really difficult. So what I've done is <coughs> is underneath the seat dear, excuse this dude, you know I haven't cleaned this since it was in co partners so them who done all this filth on you. But underneath is some wire mesh and I've unclipped that. I'll show a little clip of what I've done now. And what that does is it just allows your bum to drop a little bit lower and probably it will put more stress on the stitching and everything but it, it just sits you down a bit lower um i feel like i'm a little bit lower in the bolsters so i'm going to experiment with this see if it feels any better um the other thing is i have got these little thingy me jiggies because the seat belt doesn't hold me tight enough so what you can do with these oh you are going on here already what you can do with them is if that's the lap belt put in there with that on this can actually be locked solid so you pull on that so you can tighten this lap part tighter than you normally have it so it pins your waist down obviously you look like your, your movement here but the belt doesn't move there so that's something i'm going to experiment with i may have to go back in seats in the future i don't know I wanted to try and keep this car more 
standard in the sense of getting rid of airbags and seats and steering wheels and things like that. I don't want any of the MOT fuss anymore so I'm going to see what I can come up with um, but that is it like I said I am ready for Dawn and Dan please watch the next video of Dawn and Dan we're going to find out if them tyres are any quicker than the old ones and also don't forget look at the link below pick yourself up a t-shirt so oh one quick thing you're probably thinking why haven't you fitted the coil over Steve that's because I want to do a test um, of tyres specifically without any other changes to the car I want to find out if the tyres were the problem in my lap times um, will the car feel and handle a lot better with a tyre change plus I want this to no longer be a daily when I put them on because they're quite stiff so as soon as Arno's finished coilovers are coming on that is the end if you've stuck around to this far in the video just put a little comment saying I stuck with you right to the end Steve <laughs> thank you very much for those who did I'll see you on the next one bye